Hey guys, welcome back to Krell TV. Grace and I are moving to Tampa, Florida, and we have a lot of stuff that's been sitting in our garage waiting for videos to be made. And now that we're clearing the garage out in preparation to move, we realize that some of the stuff just needs to get done. So today we're gonna show you four upgrades to your Jeep Wrangler that are really gonna help you out down the road. Let's get started. Ding, ding, ding. First up on the list is a WD Automotive fire extinguisher mount. You guys have probably seen fire extinguishers mounted on the roll bars, mounted next to the driver's seat. This one mounts right behind the back seat along the rail where the hard top hooks up. So it actually uses those factory bolts. There's no drilling required or anything. And you can actually run this plate underneath your hard top. Okay, so this is the driver's side rear door for reference i'm in the back of the jeep right now and we have our soft top on we actually just sold our hard top but um, i'm going to show you how this thing mounts into place it's very straightforward very simple uh, you take the plate here and you've got this metal base where essentially anything can be stored a small fire extinguisher up to something extremely large because this is an adjustable rubber strap to put this in place you just get that seat belt out of the way Drop it right on the rail right there. And then it's just these two bolts to actually secure it down in place. Now it just needs the fire extinguisher thrown in it. And of course I left the fire extinguisher on the front bumper. I'll be right back. All right, fire extinguisher here, fire extinguisher there. And then the strap works by just pulling it as tight as it goes. And then you just pull this piece one rung down to get a secure fit. And that fire extinguisher is going nowhere. With the seat up, you can still reach it from this back door here. Uh, so it's still very accessible to the driver without having to rip the seat down. And it really, really neatly tucks out of the way because that's not taking up any cargo space back there. And there you have it. Installation number one is already done. It's that fast and this is a super cool product. Like I said, it doesn't take up any of the cargo space, which is one of my main concerns. And um, it's not a roll bar strap, so it's, it's much easier to get to from the back door instead of having to run around the back and open the tire carrier up. On to number two. So just like installation number one, installation number two is a very simple project. These are K&N washable cabin filters. And as you can see here, pretty straightforward concept. Dirty air in, K&N cabin filter, clean air coming out through your vents. If you guys remember, we actually did a cabin air filter video about a year ago and we used regular paper cabin filters and haven't taken a look at them since. So this will actually be a really good litmus test to see how dirty those things get, how often you need to change them and why these are better. Let's go. First step, remove your glove box. Second step, key in the ignition, turn the AC on, and then hit the cabin air recirculation button, which is the one on the far left, and it'll actually open up that little container where the cabin air filters are stored. With the glove box out and that magic little secret trap door open, the next thing you have to do is just open up this little cage right here with a single tab, and there are your two cabin filters. I actually just noticed that one of ours is completely sideways, so that's, that's no good but they're two pieces and they come out just like that. And you can tell these things are extremely dirty. There's no way that they're gonna be good or usable anymore. So that means that if I wanted to replace these, I'd have to go buy more paper filters. That's where K&N comes in. These K&N washable cabin air filters, individually packaged, and you get a K&N sticker with them. But all you have to do is pull these out. They're multi-directional, so it doesn't matter which way you put them in, right? There's no arrows saying up or down airflow. You just have to put them in just like the other air filters. And then once these get dirty, you can wash them out and put them right back in like we're doing right now. So there's one. And number two. 
These are also uh, significantly heavier than the paper filters. So you saw that one was sideways in there. Uh, that's not going to happen with these K&N because they're surrounded by rubber on the outer edges and that um, the actual mesh filter portion is uh, quite a bit thicker. And we'll close that trap door back up. Now we can throw the glove box back in. And we're all done. And just like that, installation number two is already done. Two easy ones in a row, can't get better than that. These Canon filters are awesome. In addition to being electrostatically charged to grab dust, you can also get mold, mildew, spores, pollen, fungus, bacteria, all the germs, all the stuff you don't want coming through your actual AC vents gets trapped in these instead. And when it's time to change them out, instead of having to throw them away and go buy more, you just rinse them with a hose. They come with a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty and they'll last the whole life of the vehicle. So it's an easy upgrade, easy to justify. And now we can throw these dirty things in the trash. Installation number three is a little bit heavier than the first two. This is a brand new Optima AGM battery. And let's sit down and I'll tell you a little bit about it before we put it in. Yeah. Now this is Optima's new Yellow Top AGM battery. Uh, we needed a battery when we picked this one up and it needs to go in the Jeep now. If you look through our old videos in roughly July of 2017, we posted a video called Big Battery Trouble. And what we found was that when we were off-roading and we were putting this Jeep on extreme angles uh, to one side or the other and putting it through all the vibration driving over rocks and stuff, the battery was actually spilling acid onto not only the wiring and the oxygen sensor, but also the frame of the Jeep. And it was peeling the paint off of everything. So it had to come out and it hasn't yet. Uh, it's kind of crazy that we've gone this long and still haven't replaced it, but now we're going to and the reason we waited is because we wanted to put this new Optima yellow top in. This is an AGM battery, so you can put this thing into the Jeep and go hot dogging through the washboard or put it on its side off-roading and it's not going to give you that problem that we had where we had to repaint our frame because it had peeled up from all the acid on it. I'll show you how easy it is to put in your Jeep. Removing the factory battery is really easy. These are all 10 millimeter bolts, and the only ones that you have to really take off are these two, what's the word I'm thinking of, tapered nuts on the terminals, because that's what keeps them tight, and that's what loosens them back up. Now what holds this battery in place is a small 10 millimeter bolt on this side of it. And you can see just how much battery acid and corrosion is on this thing. That's where most of our problems were coming from in that video we posted back in July. And right behind the bolt, this piece, also full of battery acid, comes out. And then you can pull this battery out. But remember, this is a spillable battery, so you want to pull it out upright and be careful with it. And I'll try and get these battery cables better out of the way as I do that. Oh, she's a heavy one. Come on now. Yeah. Oof. There's a heavy battery. All right. It's Optima time. Oof. Perfect. Now, this mount will go back on, along with the corroded little 10 millimeter bolt. Okay. Now we can throw the cables back on, just like that. Right, positive has a nice solid connection. Negative. Get that quickly attached. And now we'll get it all tightened up. All right. 
we are all hooked up. And there it is guys, installation number three. Just like that, we've got our Optima Yellow Top AGM battery in, factory battery out, and now we don't have to worry about battery acid spilling all over the place anymore. This thing's gonna serve us well. On to number four. Product installation number four. We're throwing on a Terraflex Falcon Nexus Equal Force steering stabilizer. What a mouthful. Uh, this thing is gonna do a lot more than this, which is our old steering stabilizer. This is a factory steering stabilizer that we had set up with an inch and three eighths tie rod clamp, and we were running it for, I don't know, pretty much the entire time we've had this synergy lift. So it wasn't really doing anything by the time that we pulled it off this afternoon. And uh, we're, we have a big upgrade here. This steering stabilizer was given to us by our friends, Charlie and Jason at Linneman Oil Company in Columbia, Illinois. But this is a cutting edge new steering stabilizer with a track bar bolt built in and a tie rod clamp built in. It's got three settings, medium, soft and firm, and it's an equal force stabilizer, which means that it's gonna give you pressure in both steering directions, kind of like running dual stabilizers, but without dual stabilizers. It also has a return to center function so that if you let go of your steering wheel, it will help bring it back to center. The normal argument with steering stabilizers is that people use them as band-aids to cover up things like death wobble. Don't do that, that's bad. But steering stabilizers do help with absorbing some of those minor shock loads that you get on the road so that you don't feel them in the steering wheel. So we'll show you guys how to throw this thing on. To install this Falcon stabilizer, we have to remove this bolt because this is the factory track bar bolt. And if we put it here, it'll keep everything parallel with the tie rod. So we've got a crescent wrench on the back of it, 21 millimeter on our impact. And we'll get this thing yanked off. Boom. Teamwork. <laughs> Makes the dream work. Now we'll focus on the stabilizer for a second. These are all five millimeter bolts. These four bolt the two pieces together and these two have little points on the inside that actually stab the tie rod and keep this thing in place. We're gonna loosen these two up just so that they're not pointing inward at all. There we go. And now we're gonna completely remove this clamp and get it attached to the tie rod. We started this project with the tires on the Jeep perfectly straightforward. So now we wanna make sure that this shock body is stabilized, or sorry, not stabilized, <laughs> centered between uh, these. Basically, we just wanna make sure that this is the same length on both sides. I'm not very good at talking today. <laughs> so I'm just gonna... Ooh, yeah. That looks about right to me. So now we can um, put it on the Jeep. Here we go. And we will put this in the hole where we just pulled that bolt out of, right there, in our track bar bracket. And this end is just gonna rest on the tie rod so we can um, get the nut put on this end and get this tightened down now. <laughs> Pretty sure this bolt is a 21 millimeter, but I don't have a 21 millimeter wrench and crescent wrench is the easiest thing to get on the nut on the back side so we are double crescent wrenching here this is pretty cool this is um two fully adjustable tools that are not meant for any specific part really really precise work here now we can install the tie rod clamp with those same five millimeter allen head bolts we pulled out earlier and they'll just go right into place here do to do to do And then we can get these ultra tight. <clears throat> okay, now the last thing is just tightening down these little pointy nuts, or bolts, not nuts, that'll actually poke into the tie rod and ensure that it doesn't slip right or left. Okay, installation complete. So last thing, this stabilizer has three settings on it. Right now it's on soft. I'm imagining I would use that mostly for when the tires are aired down, they've got large footprints and you don't want any extra drag on your steering box. So you want to facilitate turning as easily as possible, slowed down with a lot of resistance from those tires. Medium is what I expect to use this on every single day while we're driving, just kind of added uh, support in the steering system 
to, uh, to make it easier to drive around on the road with these giant tires. And lastly, hard um, would be used for what I can imagine would be like deep sand or anything that would really grab the steering wheel and try and pull it out of your hands if it catches. Um, from what I've heard, with this on hard, it really doesn't even return the steering wheel to center because this has so much compression in it. So I would use that really only in that case when I expect it to go fast in one straight line. Uh, so for our regular driving, we'll leave it medium and we'll let you guys, that's soft, we'll leave <laughs> it medium and we'll let you guys know how it performs. All right guys, so that's it. Our four installations for this video are done. We put in a fire extinguisher mount, cabin air filters, an Optima battery, and a Falcon stabilizer. This Jeep is ready to go on a trailer and head down to Florida. Most of the parts in the garage are on it now. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. You can check us out on all of our other social media platforms if you'd like to keep up with us. Check out our website, www.crawltv.com, and check out the description if you want links to any of these products that we used. Otherwise, we'll see you next time right here on Crawl TV. Product in <laughs> This is exact mechanics at its finest. And my crescent <laughs> wrench just broke. This crescent wrench deserves to go in the trash. Oh boy. <laughs> this seems like a good situation for a cut. Yeah. Cut. Cut.